Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We give you praise and glory and honor. We thank you for January. We thank you for February. We thank you for March. We thank you for April. We thank you for May. We thank you for June. We thank you for July. We thank you for what we do in the rest of the year. We praise you. We thank you. Glory be to your holy name in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a new hour. Folks, we're just about to enter into a new season. Some of you are ready in the new season. And so you're welcome to new things, new season, new sounds, new, new money, new houses, new cars, new ideas, new businesses, new jobs, new. Eight is the number of new beginnings, new stuff, new songs from heaven new friends, new flavor, new fragrance in the name of Jesus. Welcome to Command Your Day. My name is Pastor Chusey. And guess what? We're talking about mysterious sicknesses. We've been dealing, welcome every one of you. I will get to greet you in a moment. We started all of this week, hey, what if I talking about sicknesses, diseases, but there's one part of it that I want us to deal with. Pastor Benga, you're welcome. Pastor Joseph, you're welcome. Uh, let's start from here. Hasana, you're welcome. Dickness Esther, welcome. Princess Ruth, welcome. Ronnie, welcome. Uh, Jennifer, you are so welcome. Sheryl, you're welcome. Tashi, you're welcome. Karen Taylor, you're welcome. Woody Fad, you're welcome. Finjo Spatch, you're welcome. Shadi X, you're welcome. Prevail, you're welcome. Nani0143, you are welcome. Adrian ST, you're welcome. Uh, and, uh, yes, I think uh, Anointed to Worship, you are welcome. Nice name. Every one of you, welcome in the name of Jesus. Samrak, you're welcome. Latricia, you're welcome. That's the beauty of social media. You can scroll up and down and get to talk to the people. Okay, Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, before I explain and put in context what we're about to study. Thank you again to all the pastors, women of God watching, and men of God. Isaiah 53, 4 to 5, Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Did you ever know welcome? He was bruised for our iniquities. Curly, you're welcome. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Jesus, let me say it quickly, Deborah, you're welcome. If you want to write it down, Jesus did not die just to give us physical healing only. He gave us, he bore our griefs. We're talking about Hey, Jessica, you're welcome. We're talking about mysterious, strange, demonic sicknesses. Jeez, griefs. If somebody is grieved or dealing with the spirit of grief, it may not be physical, but the person is sick in their heart, probably emotional. And then we talk of sorrows, of course, sorrows, oh boy, oh my goodness. Sorrow can kill people. And then we're talking about afflictions and 
transgressions and iniquities. And so there are other sicknesses that are not physical, but they are sicknesses. 1 Peter 2.24, 1 Peter 2.24, who his own self bear our sins, because sin does have a weight, run a race that is set before you, and uh, shed the, the weight that does easily beset us, I believe, uh, Hebrews 12 and 1, if I'm correct. He bear, he carried our sins in his own body, on the tree, the tree of Calvary, that we being dead to sins should live, should live unto righteousness. We pray for the Bahamas, and we command that hurricane to bypass Bahamas and head out into the ocean. There shall be no loss. There shall be no destruction, no crisis. We speak a hedge of protection of the blood of Jesus over the islands of the Caribbean and parts of the USA. We decree it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And everybody say amen real quick. This is for all of that region. 1 Peter 2.24, Prophets Matthew, welcome. I'll be uh, running your welcome. He who his own self bear our sins in his own body. So sickness has a weight. That's my point. Sickness has a weight. You're welcome. Sin has a weight. Sorrow, of course, the spirit of heaviness. The spirit of heaviness has a way, heavy, spirit of heaviness. There's a lot of people who are sick, but not physically. And some are sick physically, and it's mysterious. Let's look for other ways to describe what we're talking about. We're talking about terminal diseases. We're talking about mysterious diseases. We're talking about diseases that the x-ray machine, uh, the scan machine cannot find. I remember whew, years ago, that boy should be <laughs> probably, this was in 1995. That boy should be probably getting ready to get married, but uh, his mother had been pregnant for over 12 months with him. And the woman kept saying that she was pregnant. And they said, well, if you're pregnant, give birth, give birth. And nothing happened for months and months and months. And she said she would feel a baby moving. Pastor Doris, you're welcome. Yet, nothing happened. And so we had a a revival meeting, series of meetings in their church. And the next day, thank you, thank you, she gave birth to a baby boy, but she had gone to several clinics and hospitals and they couldn't see any baby, they, but the baby woman. So I thought that was great, but about two years ago, I had shared it with you here I met a lady who her mother carried for 36 months, three years. A nurse teen, you're welcome. Three years, her mother carried her. By the time she was born, she had grown teeth, she had grown hair, she had grown long nails. Of course, the young lady we're talking about is married right now. I mean, glory be to God. Sylvia, you're welcome. So when we're talking of uh, mysterious sicknesses, there are certain sicknesses, pains and aches, sicknesses, diseases, afflictions, plagues that no machine can trace, but they are real. And the person says, Something is moving around. They say, well, if we can't see it, we've drawn your blood. 
and so on. Uh, maybe some of you who are in the medical profession can help us, give us an idea. Strange weights, harassments, torments, dream attacks. Those are real. In Mark chapter 9, Jesus said, This kind goeth not out except by prayer and fasting. Please share on Facebook as soon as you join. Thank you for sharing. And invite your followers on Periscope, please. Thank you. This kind will not go out except by prayer and fasting. This kind, he came down from the mountain and uh, he uh, saw, he saw his uh, boys struggling with one boy. And Jesus said to them, he cast out the spirit. And then his boys asked him, how come we couldn't do this? He said, ah, this kind, Mark 17, 21, this kind this type of devil cannot go out by medications, by shots, by injections, by x-rays and all the pillory. This kind is stubborn. Call it stubborn sickness, call it mysterious sickness, call it demonic sickness, and uh, whatever you want to call it, it is real. All right. Let's look at uh, uh, Luke 13, which is a very famous illustration. Yeah, this kind, Mark 9, 29. This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. This kind, Gugurus, you're welcome. This kind, this kind, Luke 13, you know the story of the woman who was uh, suffering for 18 years. Hallelujah. Luke 13, verse 11. Luke 13, verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit, a spirit of infirmity. and uh, infirmity 13 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called to her, to, he called her to him and said unto her, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity and nothing happened. The next verse, verse 13, he spoke the same voice that called forth Lazarus, that rebuked the storm, and so on and so forth. When nothing happened, he did something. He laid hands on her for her healing. He had to put his hand on her. Why? Because there was a spirit of infirmity. It wasn't a normal sickness, a spirit of infirmity. By the time we get to verse 16, verse 16, Jesus said, And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed from this bond of on the Shabbat day, whom Satan had bound. Chris Money, you're welcome. Whom Satan had bound. So the devil had bound her. This shows you, Luke 13, verse 16, that there are certain sicknesses straight from the pit of hell. The spirit of infirmity. She wasn't suffering from... Uh, poor diet or exposure to bad uh, weather or accidents or falls or fire or hot water or burns. No, this one was a spirit. And in verse 13, 16, 
we see that it was the devil who had bound her, tied her up. Whew. So there are types of, so hello, Judge Queen 777, you're welcome. So the spirit of infirmity is at work. The spirit of infirmity works mysterious sicknesses, for lucky you're welcome, strange sicknesses, strange diseases, strange afflictions, sicknesses, diseases that defy any medication. I uh, met a woman who was looking for babies years ago. She had gone everywhere, everywhere. Egypt, US, UK, I think she must have tried India as well, nothing. And I said to her, this is not normal, this is spiritual. And of course, God set her free. That girl is, uh, I think she's in university now, so I'm probably getting ready to graduate. Glory be to God. So please write this down. Strange sicknesses are directly from the pit of hell. Strange sicknesses, strange diseases, afflictions, they are specially designed. Is all sickness, somebody's asking on Facebook, is all sickness unto death? No, of course not. Not all sicknesses are unto death. Some sicknesses don't take people out. They get healed, they get free. But I'm saying that not all sicknesses are biological or medical or scientific or normal. And let, let me explain. Um, people have um, sicknesses that occur every year at the same time. Every year, those sicknesses occur at the same time. They won't kill the person. They will occur, stay for weeks or months or days, and then go. And then come back same time this, the next year. What do you want to call that? I heard the story of a man who was so sick, he sold Six, uh, somebody's writing on Periscope, that used to happen to her every April and every November, somebody's writing on Periscope, every April and November, same sickness every year. See that? And that's mysterious. Hallelujah. Tamika, you're welcome. So there are sicknesses like that that grab people. They, we call it annual sicknesses. And then you see uh, sicknesses that refuse medications. And then you see sicknesses that defy scientific search. At least coronavirus, it has a name. Now people are beginning to find out that no, you need to wear a mask and sanitize and wash your hands and now they're saying that you need to also cover your eyes, not just your nose and mouth. And trust me, very soon they will say you need to cover your ears as well. <laughs> and very soon they may say you need to wear a helmet or wear a Chinese uh, zoot suit, you know. That's just... <sighs> of course, you know that coronavirus is demonic. It is demonic. It is. And because it's mysterious, there's another mysterious power that can be used against it. And that is the name of Jesus or the blood of Jesus or the fire of the Holy Ghost or the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. God is always ahead of the enemy. Always ahead. Far, far too ahead. Invisible forces that cause the body to destroy itself. What do you want to call that? Normal. How about sicknesses, Lexi, you're welcome, that go from generation to generation. Now you go to get a job or you go for a medical checkup or something. 
the doctors who are secular, some of them, will ask you if this type of sickness, does cancer, does high blood pressure, diabetes, so on, do, do, does it run in your family? So how can sickness go from parents to children? That is mysterious. That is demonic. Why can't the sickness be done with one generation and be gone? How did it come? It travels through the blood, through the DNA, through the waters, through the all of the inheritances. Amen. And let me pray my first prayer. If there's anybody who is dealing with any form of strange sickness, generation to generation sickness, affliction, bondage, today in the name of Jesus we command it broken in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed and set free. In Jesus' mighty name, and God's people said amen. Mysterious sicknesses, and just call her, you're welcome, that attack all targets. Today, they say he's attacking the finger. Tomorrow, he's gone to the ear. The next day, he's gone to the liver. The next day, he's now dealing with uh, the kidney. That, of course, is demonic. Amen now. And then sickness is the stage a comeback after healing. They say it's a, is it a relapse, they call it. Completely healed. But then the next year is back full force. That is demonic. That is satanic. That is mysterious. That is strange. Griefs. And then you're talking about strange movements in the body. I remember they brought a lady years ago. She, she, this lady would lose almost all her blood and the, she would just pass out almost at the point of death. They would rush her to the hospital. The blood is almost gone. They give her blood transfusion and she's okay. The blood level comes fine, everything is fine. She's back, she's normal. They send her home. The next morning, all the blood is gone in that house. And it happened over and, and one day they brought her and I said, this is not normal. There's a devil inside her body that drains all that blood. Now, for those in the Western world, in America, or those who are not in churches or have not heard things like that, may sound very strange to you. But these things are real. It's real. You go to places, you see stuff. Anyway, long story short, God told me to deal with the devil first, expel that spirit, Minister healing, exactly what Jesus did in, in uh, Luke chapter 13. Cast out the devil, minister healing, freedom came. And she was completely set free. Hallelujah. I remember a lady who was allergic to water. You tell, so how would she eat or drink? How would a woman allergic to water ever do business in life? Hallelujah. She couldn't bathe. If, if a drop of water touched her body, she would just faint and pass out, almost die. The Lord said, take authority as a devil. I mean, there's some very bold stuff. God said, get a bucket of water. Get her ready, and God set her free. I said, I dare that devil to come attack you. And of course, she went and took a bath and, and or shower or whatever, a wash, or just to just put water on her whole head and completely got free. Glory be to God. Can somebody give Jesus a hand clap? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Strange stuff that you've never heard of it or never seen it, or never experienced it, doesn't, does not mean that it's not there. Amen now. Strange movements, strange gain of weight. 
people just start gaining weight mysteriously or losing weight mysteriously. So mysterious weight problems, mysterious weight problems can be a problem. Of course it is. Some want to lose weight, but they're gaining. Some want to gain weight, but they're losing weight. Hallelujah. Strange sicknesses. Strange weight problems. Of course. Those are real. These are real stuff. Real heavy weight, heavy duty stuff. Remember in Acts chapter 3, the man at the beautiful gate. Remember? From verse 1, Paul, uh, P Peter and John going into the temple saw this man. He said, look, they said, look on us. He was expecting to receive money. And they said, gold and silver have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and be. He sat there while there was a devil holding him down. And they had to grab him. Immediately the anointing touched his body. That devil jumped out and the man leapt up, jumping and dancing and praising the Lord. Man, this is the kind of thing that will make Kenneth Hagin want to run around the building. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter 5. The man at the uh, pool of Bethesda, 38 years, he could see but couldn't get there. Darcy, you're welcome. He could hear, but something held him from getting to the water. Glory be to God. Whoever, whatever is holding anybody bound right now, in the name of Jesus, that mysterious sickness in your body, your bones, your knees, your blood, your sleep, your skin, your mind, your food, your drink, your weight gain, weight loss, we bind it in the name of Jesus and we command it to lose its hold and go and never return in the name of Jesus. Emma, you're welcome. It will never return in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Say amen for somebody in your family. Invisible forces that attack. What you see is not what it is. The, the doctor will see that, and the nurse will see that, and the scan machine will see that, and the x-ray will see that, but that's not what it is. How come in some families, everybody is diabetic? In other families, everybody has high blood pressure. In other how does it go? And some families cancer in every generation. Well, where does it go? How? Because this, these are, there are devils that enforce these sicknesses. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So right now we come against every generational sickness, named and not named, known and not known, hidden, mysterious, wherever, whatever it is called, we break his power, we come against it in the name of Jesus, we command it to lose his hold and let you go now. We break that pattern of sickness from generation to generation in your family. Go in the name of Jesus and never return in Jesus' mighty name. And if you notice that one or two of your children is already having the same symptoms like you did, we break his power now in the name of Jesus. Uh, I remember a lady, her mother died uh, under 50 in her 40s, between 45 and 50. When she turned 45, when she was heading, she was about 39. The devil said to her, I'm going to stop you before you get to 50, the way your mother was stopped. Of course, she just happened to be in Glory House for some program, and God set her free. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. 
You remember the story of T.D. Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes? His father died under 50. And when he was in his 40s coming up, the devil said to him, you will not see 50. I'm going to take you out. Of course, God set him free. He's in his 60s now, completely set free. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. They can come from the spirit world. Demonic sicknesses can come from the spirit world. People who uh, get attacked in the dream at night. Remember the story I told you of uh, two uh, a brother and sister, uh, one was in another city and the other was in another city. The sister was in one city, the brother was in another city. They had the same dream, the same night, the same time. In the dream, somebody gave them a shot with an injection, with a syringe, uh, like a hospital shot. The brother woke up with pains in his body and he went for a, to the hospital. They ran a check. He was HIV positive. Wow. He called his sister, heartbroken, to get some consolation. The sister said, oh, she was going to call him. The same story, the same HIV positive to brother and sister in two different countries, in two different uh, cities in the same nation. Thank God for those who understand these things. Not all pastors believe that there's a spirit. They, some pastors don't even believe there's a, the blood of Jesus and so on and so forth. Thank God. Well, they ran to this man of God who understood these things. Remember, I was talking to you about understanding the spirit of revelation, the insight, understanding. Well, the pastor said, I know what it is. And both of them met up, took authority, broke that thing, expelled that devil, set them free, release healing. Both healed the same day, went back, did an HIV test. Both of them tested negative. Glory be to God. Thank you. Jesus. Where did it come from? Of course, write this down. Sickness, sicknesses and diseases can be programmed. They can be programmed. They can be deployed through witchcraft, through juju, through obia, through divination, through enchantment, through uh, wicca, through uh, demonic powers. Hallelujah. They can be dispatched. They can be sent through witchcraft, through familiar spirits, through, through satanic, demonic spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. They can be. They are. Now, it doesn't matter whether you believe or not or you, 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 you want to hear it or not. That's just what happens. That's just, that's just, you better be, just thank God for the blood of Jesus. These sicknesses are invisible. Tanya, you're welcome. Invisible. You can't see them. Machines can detect them, but they're, they're, they're real. Amen now. Hallelujah. First John 3 and 8. Let's go. Always, I give these verses. So those are the warring verses, warfare verses that you can use. First John 3 and 8. Uh, part B, second part of it, for this purpose, for this purpose, 1 John 3, 8, B, second part of it, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil, the works of the devil, the works of the devil. The works of the devil. The devil. Sickness is a work of the devil. Disease is a work of the devil. It's not every sickness that comes through sin. It's not every sickness that comes through bad eating, bad lifestyle, smoking, drinking, and so on. Now, 
look at coronavirus attacks the lungs, even those who smoke and those who don't smoke. So it's not a smoker's disease, but it's a lung disease, means mainly respiratory disease. And if there be anybody related to you, we command the absolute deliverance now by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God said, and God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. For this purpose, for this purpose, for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Psalm 102, verse 20. You must know some healing verses. Please write this down. You must learn and know some healing verses. There are basic healing verses you must know. And write this down. Learn those healing verses now, not when you need them. Mm -mm. You learn them now so that anytime you need them, you just begin. You cannot overcome. You cannot engage in spiritual warfare successfully without using the word of God. Please hear me. You cannot engage in spiritual warfare without using the word of God. Even if it's one verse. 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 You must be able to engage the enemy with, even if it's, the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> Even if it's the Lord is my shepherd. Even if it's Isaiah 54, 17. Isaiah 54, 17. Uh, um, no weapon fashioned against me shall be able to prosper. You, 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 can't, don't, you never engage the... You, you cannot win spiritual warfare by crying or feeling sorry for yourself mm -mm. or having a pity party or, or feeling uh, lost, Dorney, you're welcome, or feeling, uh, I don't know why they don't like me in my office. I don't know why they don't like me on the job. I don't know why I'm in this condition, but I'm a tither and I give and I live for God and I don't fool around with men and women and I don't nightclub, I don't drink. I wonder why this is happening to me. God, this is not fair. After all, I give first fruit. That's not, mm -mm, no. <laughs> it's not by works, no. It's by the word. When the devil came against Jesus, it is written, turn the bread to stone. It is written. Jump down from the pinnacle of the mount. It is written. Bow down, worship me, and I'll give you a... It is written. You, even if it's... A, you got to... Even if it's First Peter 2.24. Am I sounding like uh, we're in Sunday school? You've got to learn. If you have to write them out, copy them out, and begin to declare them, hallelujah, they are effective. They work. Glory, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not physical. You don't, they, 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 no, they're messing with you on the job. You're crying in your car. God have mercy. Receive strength for victory. Receive a fresh anointing for overcoming. Receive a fresh mantle for breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. And somebody's receiving it. Glory be to God. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word. He sent his word. He sent his word. Evelyn, you're welcome. He sent his word. Thank you for those hearts on Periscope. He sent his word. He sent his word. They're dealing with you. Send the word. They are fighting you. Send the word. They don't like you. Send the word. 
they hate you, send the word. You having money issues, send the word. Uh, sickness in your body, send the word. Point at that part of your body and say, here, hear me. Sickness has a name. Every sickness has a name. If it has a name, it has a cure. Because Philippians 2 says that, Philippians 2, at the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ, every, at the name of Jesus, send the word. I've prayed with people from Atlanta in parts, other continents. I couldn't get there by air or by any means, but or in different cities in America. People have been healed on command your day. Only God knows how many people have been healed, delivered, blessed, prospered, all kinds of things on command your day by sending the word. Joy Thompson, you're welcome. So right now we give God glory for his word, for the sent word. Every time we have, we call for testimonies in glory, how somebody will jump up. Every time somebody will jump up. The other day, just a few days ago, uh, somebody sent me a testimony. I, I saw the young man with his wife and the parents. I told the, I said, this is not right. Something is wrong with this marriage. But after six years, your son will come out of this free. Six years later, now it's six years, I got the report that the boy completely delivered from that whatever, whatever. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Infirmities, so you've got to always, I don't care if it's a bank vault in a bank. The word of God can reach there. There is no other, heaven and earth may pass away, but the word of God will never. But pastor, I said this and nothing happened. That's why I was telling you yesterday, you've got to grow in the revelation and understanding of the word. You, you don't just say it for saying sake. Do you understand what you're saying? For me to understand the power of the blood of Jesus, I was sharing with you yesterday, I had to learn about the stripes of Jesus, how he shed his blood seven times. What does blood do in the body of the flesh? And what does blood do in the spirit realm? The blood of goats and cows and the blood of lambs and heifers and all. Why did God ask for so much blood? So how come, what is the power in the blood? Then what is the power in the blood of Jesus, the supreme blood of the universe? Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody said, thank you, Father, for the blood. And somebody said, thank you, Father, for the revelation of the power and the potency of the blood of Jesus. He took our infirmities. Jesus took our infirmities. He carried. He took, yes, revelation is a choice. Hallelujah. You've got to use this. What does, just read it. It's science, in science. What blood does? Okay, so what does the blood of Jesus do? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. These are real things. Hallelujah. <laughs> How can a woman be allergic to water? How would she cook? How would she bathe? How would she take care of her children? How, you can't do without water. How would she drink? What would she drink? Guinness? <laughs> will, she, will she drink Guinness? Huh? Glory be to God. Drink Hanekin? <laughs> or Jack Daniels? Glory be to God forevermore. Or use uh, apple juice to shower? We give God praise for the blood of Jesus. Remember the woman with the strange hair loss? 
She had a dream. Thank you, Father. She had a dream. In the dream, birds were eat, were picking up her hair in the dream. In Atlanta, not in uh, India or Africa. <laughs> Hallelujah. My member, it was, she was in our church. And she said she woke up one day, all her hair began to fall out. Within a couple of days, all the hair gone. And she had a big wig, well, wig, and I didn't know it was, you know, it looked so real. She pulled it off in my office and said, Pastor, can you see? I said, I know. I know what it is. Anointed her head with oil. Get up! Go! In the name of Jesus. Come on, later, you're welcome. Completely free. A couple of weeks later, she came back with a big, real, natural hair afro. Ooh, boy, was it time to rejoice and give God praise. What do you think causes miscarriages? Of course, devils. There was a lady, she had had eight miscarriages. Eight of them. I met some women, I've met some women who have had six, four, ten, fifteen, countless miscarriages. And I said, this is, I, but didn't you go to the doctor? Yeah, I did. What did the doctor say? Well, they said they checked. The tubes are fine. Eggs are fine. Ovaries are fine. Womb is fine. Everything is fine. But we, they don't know what to say. I say, I know what it is. You do? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I do. Come out in the name of Jesus, you stupid devil that steals babies from the womb. Glory. God, God set her free. Hallelujah. She's done having children. Amen. So if there's anybody... Especially female problems. Apostle, you're watching today. Welcome. Female problems. Male problems. Why in the world would a woman have 15 miscarriages? Eight miscarriages. Did she kill Jesus? If she did, Jesus died for our sins. Of course there's a devil behind it. Hallelujah. Welcome, sir. There's a devil behind it. You bind that devil and kick it out. Hallelujah. You expel that foul devil. If you go to, remember, I've, I've done, I've, I've prayed that, that prayer for so many women. I, don't, I mean, I, I remember the one that, you know, she would take in, and at the seventh month, she would lose it. And they put her on a bed and put her, her, her head down and put her feet up. I, we got there in New York. I said, what is this? They said, well, the, the, the doctor said they have to put her head down. What? What an uncomfortable way of sleeping. And le for weeks. They said, well, they didn't want the baby to fall out. What? I was so mad. Lay the hands on that thing. Come out in the name of Jesus. Lose her and let her go. It just rises from my spirit. Go in Jesus' name. Completely healed. I said, put her, stand up. She walked us, uh, saw us off to the car. I finished having babies. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, which x-ray machine isn't in New York? Or scan or CT scan. That's, this, listen, write this down. Devils do not show in x rays or scans or blood tests. They don't. Like, have you, can air show? Hallelujah. Receive grace. Receive the anointing to uproot every planning of the wicked in your body. With your mouth, declare it to command it to get out. With every breath you have in you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Male problems. Not all male problems. Not all. When it's mysterious. And it defies solutions. And enemy had done this. Hallelujah. Let's look at some of the qualities 
I was able to put down some of the things that run through all of our analogy and analysis on today's broadcast. Hallelujah. The first is that demonic mysterious sicknesses are incurable. They're incurable. They're incurable. Mark chapter 5, the woman with the issue of blood. She has spent all her money. And she bled for 12 years, spent all her money on physicians and was nothing better. But when she heard about Jesus, she said, but if I may go there and touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be made whole. She heard, she went, she touched, she got, she went home. This, this terrible, mysterious, incurable diseases. Yeah, Pastor, but the specialist in Mayo Clinic, the specialist in uh, Oxford University Research Hospital. <laughs> Number two, demonic sicknesses have no respect to names of hospitals or titles of doctors and physicians and uh, consultants and research uh, professors. <laughs> they don't care. They don't care about where you will go. Number three, these diseases don't care about how much you spend. They want the person to finish all his money. A man has seven houses, fully built, paid for, seven houses. He rented out six. He lived in one. This sickness came from nowhere. He spent all his money, spent all his savings, sold house number one, spent it all, two, three, four, five, six, not healed. The seventh house he lived in, he offered it for sale. Unfortunately, he couldn't find the papers for the house. That was how that house was saved. And he ran into a pastor who understood these things. And he got free. Today, every sickness that your family has suffered shall never, ever, ever come near you or near your dwelling in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. These sicknesses are mysterious. They cannot be seen or detected or tracked with medical gadgets. No, they cannot. Mm -mm. And then... The next thing, they are elongated. These sicknesses are elongated. They last for a long time. The demonic sicknesses just don't kill people like that. No, 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 no. They will waste the person, waste their resources, drain them, and then take care of them. Elongated, last for a long time. Number six, these sicknesses require not only healing, they require spiritual deliverance. Deliverance, there's a spirit at work, mysterious sicknesses, mysterious losses, strange happenings. They are not normal, folks able-bodied people. The next day, they have a terminal disease. Not all cancer is biological or medical. Yeah, I use the word medical. Not all cancers are medical. Not high, all high blood pressure conditions are medical. Not all bone conditions are medical. Not all sicknesses and diseases are medical. Some are demonic. Can I say something that will shock you? Even Christian people pray against Christians that strange sicknesses should. Christians pray for strange sicknesses to kill Christians. Pastors pray against people. Of course, the question is, Pastor Tuesday, but will God answer that prayer? That's not the question. The question is, if anybody begins to go in that area, they're using, these are demonic forces. Parents curse their children 
to have strange sicknesses, crush them, to die. Children curse their parents. Siblings curse each other. They say, God forbid. Husbands curse their wives. Wives curse their husbands. I've seen them. I've been, uh, I've been around a couple of days now. <laughs> Glory be to God. So, Joy Widow, you're welcome. So, these things are real, man. Somebody please share on Facebook and, and invite your followers on Periscope. Share on every platform. Folks, the number one seek, the number one prayer request in the world is sickness. Request for healing. Request for healing. Request for healing, folks. It's okay, Joy. That is what is the no people are the number one prayer request on earth is not give me money, give me money, give what? No. I want to be well. I want to be healed. I want to function well. You should not take it for granted that, like I always remind you, that you're able to wash yourself, dress yourself, feed yourself, drive yourself, go down your stairs yourself, uh, cook your meal yourself, go to your bank yourself. Come on, somebody. Hear clearly, see clearly. Even if you're using glasses, thank God that you can afford glasses. Somebody's writing on Facebook, her ex-husband, a minister, prayed for her death that she would have a car accident and die. See that? Peachy Smith, you're welcome. These things are real. See, but in many churches and congregations, these things are not talked about. They're not discussed. People, neighbors pray for neighbors to die of sickness. And they do obia or juju. And so you should every day thank God. Psalm 103, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 103, verse 1 to 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me. You must make time, Elizabeth, welcome, to bless the Lord for your body. Forget about job and money and car and clothes and shoes and husbands and wives. No, you must always thank God for keeping you alive and well. Nothing is as precious as good health. Will Dyer, you're welcome. Welcome. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not, and forget not, and forget not. It's easy to forget and forget not. All his benefits, you may not have a job right now, but there are the things you do not also have. <laughs> who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. You may not have a job now, but don't forget you also don't have coronavirus. Thank him for that. You may not have a husband right now, but thank him that you do not have cancer. You may not have a car right now, thank him that you are not lame. You may not have um, uh, the latest uh, fashion, but thank God that you are not sleeping under the breeze. So you must thank God for what you have and thank him for what you don't have. Hallelujah. Does that make sense, somebody? Thank God that you don't have diabetes. Some do. Thank God you don't have ulcer. Some do. Chronic ulcer. I, I remember the lady I prayed for like that. 
she had, and then her son, I just, her son, the same thing, heartburn, uh, uh, ulcer, chronic ulcer, heart palpitations, and something else. One, the mother had it, the son had it. And the devil was taking both of them out straight. One thing the devil likes to do is to make people be sick for a long time and then take them out. The same instant, the same moment, prayed for the mother, completely healed. And then, not the same time, then the son heard of what God did for the mother. He came to me, I said, listen, let's go. I'm going to such a church to preach at. And she, he came with me and I had to point during the service at the peak of the anointing and ministered to him, a pastor himself, heart problems, uh, these, all these tough, crazy names, completely healed, completely delivered. When I had got married, I had children, doing well, glory be to God. May God reward you for your prayers. It's better to pray for the sick. It's better to give prayers for sickness. It's better to give prayers to the sick than to receive prayer for sickness. It's better to be the one interceding than the one needing intercession. Don't take you for granted. Well, I don't like my car. Thank God that you have a car. There are those who have Bentleys, but no good health. What? Tell me how. Do you know how important good health is? Because some of you, Pastor, why are you teaching so much on sickness and disease? Because there are people, listen, Without good health, let me remind you in case you don't know. Without good health, your car is not enjoyable. <laughs> Without good health, your jet, private plane, is not enjoyable. Without good health, your designer clothes, you, Saint Laurent, uh, the Armani, you hate to see them. Without good health, uh, that, that should be a good uh, tweet. Without good health, your money is useless. Without, uh-huh, see? Without good health, your clothes are useless. Without good health, your shoes are hopeless. Without good health, your money is rottenness. Without good health, you can't even sleep with your husband. You can't sleep with your wife. You can't even fight with your brother or sister. Without good health, you can't worship God. Without good health, you can't go to church. Without good health, you can't enjoy uh, filet mignon. Without good health, you can't travel around the world. You got the money. Without good health, there's no peace, no joy, no excitement. Is that a life? that God wants for his children. And some people will argue, without good health, you can't even, you can, there's, the, the devil is a liar. No wonder Jesus came to save and to heal and to deliver. Nothing beats good health. Nothing. Nothing beats good health. So don't be surprised if you hear me going over it. We're going to teach on this thing until all of you begin to flow in the anointing of healing and deliverance. Begin to lay hands on yourself and lay hands on other people. And you, your house become a healing house. And some of your churches become healing churches. What? Tell me what you can do without good health. Money, sports, fashion, ministry, food. Even if they give you the, <laughs> you, 
It's tasteless. Nothing. Thank you, Cheryl. So you you better get ready because next month is the month of healing and health. Healing and health. Healing and health. He, he may teach on other things, but listen, people are sick. Christians are sick. Pastors are sick. Christians are sick. Christians are dealing, there is more sickness in the church than out there because out there, they do everything. But Christian people cannot even walk in faith, learn the word. Preachers don't even believe in divine healing or are afraid to lay hands on people. I wish, I can't even remember, except the Holy Ghost reminds me of testimonies in the area of healing. Now it makes sense to me as to why God gave me that strong healing anointing early, early, very early in the ministry. I used to wonder, now it makes sense. We, the number one need of every Christian, apart from salvation, is healing. We don't, don't even go into psychological healing, emotional healing, mental health and wellness, lifestyle of wellness and oh my goodness don't go into nutrition and you will have so look at all the, the market for supplements look at the market with the coronavirus now zinc is hot cake <laughs> zinc tablets you can't see it to buy chloroquine whether the with all the controversy chloroquine is a hot cake just before I came on, vitamin C, hot cake. Before I came on today's broadcast, one of the state governors in the U.S., one of the state governors has um, lifted the ban on chloroquine in his state. He's now permitted his citizens in that state to begin to take chloroquine and use it. Hello. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen now. So, Job, he suffered boils on his skin, strange sicknesses, strange diseases, strange stuff. I prayed for men who have had strange uh, sexual issues, prostrate issues, sicknesses, women with cysts and growths and um, uh, fibroids and, and all kinds of stuff. And they say, Pastor, I've gone from, I remember, I, I remember I prayed for women and they lost weight instantly. Brenda Williams, you well remember the told you the story of a lady in Maryland, in the USA. Laid hands on praying for her, her 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 skirt fell fell out, fell out. She shrunk instantly. Her skirt fell. <laughs> and they quickly had to. So I rebuke the pain in your shoulder and neck now in the name of Jesus. Prayed for her, she shrunk her skirt for. My wife was giving me a sign, don't look down. Then they pulled her skirt up and helped her. It's happened in Glory House, amen. Yeah, if you need to lose weight in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that mysterious weight gain and I command healing to come, water retention disappear. Any weight gain that came through witchcraft or through medications or something mysterious, uh, that occurred in the spirit realm, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Go in Jesus' name. Any satanic, demonic entity hovering over your home, your room, your bedroom, let it go by fire. Go by fire. Go by fire in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Any hex, vex, curse, 
threat, enchantment, evil words, evil prayers, release against anybody listening, wherever you are, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I break it in the name of Jesus. I release you in Jesus' mighty name. By the stripes of Jesus, you are set free and healed. Any curse of sickness, mysterious sickness that came upon you from your mother, from your father, from your uncle, from your aunt, from your cousin, from your niece, your, your, your brother, your sister, your ex-husband, ex-wife, ex-girlfriend, somebody you turned down, boss, neighbor, uh, classmate, schoolmate, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Loose your hold and go. Loose your hold and go. In the name of Jesus. We overcome you by the blood of Jesus. We decree healing. We decree wellness. We decree restoration. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. In Jesus mighty name. Be made whole. In the name of Jesus. Male problems, female problems, strange movements in the body, cancers, ulcers, high blood pressure, infirmities, diseases, strange things in the body, strange patterns in the family that have defied solution. Lose your hold and go in the name of Jesus. That locked down by infirmity that has defied solution. Lose you and let you go in the name of Jesus. That spirit of infirmity and mental, emotional imbalance. Lose you and let you go in the name of Jesus. Spirit of sorrow, depression, heaviness that comes on you and goes and comes and goes and comes. Loose your hold and go in the name of Jesus. Any sorcery, sorcerer that has cursed you, I break that curse in the name of Jesus. Christ has taken those curses away. You have no business with them. Long conditions, go. He took your infirmities. He has taken them away. Therefore, you have no business keeping them in the name of Jesus. Every plague, on assignment against you and your family, we command it to die. Die, die in the name of Jesus. You will walk in those exceeding great and precious promises in the name of Jesus. The devil has no power to determine when you can eat, when you can stand, when you can go, when you can come. The devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. Receive perfect soundness in your mind, your soul, your spirit. I declare you sickness free in the name of Jesus. I said, I declare you sickness free in the name of Jesus. Any sickness, any strange devil, demonic entity in your home, your bedroom, over your house, in your blood, waters, veins, organs that is hiding from medicines and medications. Today, by the blood of Jesus, we command those sicknesses arrested and set on fire in the name of Jesus. Tonight, as we receive the blood of Jesus, receive the body of Jesus, may the Fire in the blood of Jesus, the fire in the body of Jesus, in the anointing, go deep down, search out those sicknesses and destroy them. And I declare you free. You and your household, you and your loved ones, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and God's people said, Amen. If you're not born again, these prayers cannot work for you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. I receive you into my life and my heart as my Lord and Savior. 
In Jesus' mighty name. Father, wash these ones who have prayed those prayers with your blood. Receive them. Put them in your secret place. Write their names in the book of life. And now let the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the covenant in the blood and flesh of Jesus, begin to work for them. For Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is he that hangeth on the cross. Jesus died on the tree and set us free. Adam and Eve caused trouble by eating from one tree. And Jesus came and broke the power of sin, sickness, and hell by hanging on another tree, the tree on the hill of Calvary. And we give him praise and thanks for that. Get your bread. As soon as you're ready, please type one. And then we go. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto, unto, unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Father, tonight we deploy the anointing in the flesh of Jesus. And we send it to set the captives free and heal everyone. You heal them all. Let tonight be that night that you would heal all again. In the name of God the Father, God the Son. God, the Holy Spirit, you may now eat in Jesus' name. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as I eat this bread, as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Father, tonight, Jesus was not overcome by any virus or curse or sickness or disease or infirmity. He took our place and we take his place as the righteousness of God in Christ. We receive the fullness of that power in his blood. And we receive healing and wellness and health the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you may now drink in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It is done. I said it is done in Jesus' name. Give him at least 20 hearts or thumbs up or something to show your praise and thanks and glory. Father, we thank you for all you've done, for all you're doing, for all you are yet to do. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't know why you hide those hearts and thumbs up and likes. Do they, do they charge you money when you, you, you're giving them as your praise to Jesus because it is done. It is done in the name of Jesus. I declare you and your household free. I declare you healed. I declare you delivered. I declare you blessed of the Lord. And it will manifest in your life and in your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Before you go, let's receive an offering. To say thank you, Jesus, on this last day of the month for those in the U.S. and those outside. Let's give him an offering of thanks today for all he's done since January. Can you believe we've gone through eight months, seven months, we're about to stay, and you're still alive. You're COVID-19 free. You're still in your house. You're still alive and well. Command your day has been running six days a day a week, five days a week since March. Thank him and give him praise 
for the grace, the anointing, the strength, the peace, the place, the power for all is done sitting here and talking to the nations, literally nations all over the world. Only God is the doer of it all, and to him be all the glory. In the name of Jesus, get your offering. Some of you have your tithe. Let's do it. You can mail your seed to Glory House World Church, 4877 C. Lawrenceville Highway, Tucker, Georgia, 33084. You can use Cash App, dollar sign Glory Church, Cash App, dollar sign Glory Church, okay? Thank you. You can sell it and use uh, the number 770-909-5000. Somebody can help us stick them up there on Facebook. That would be awesome. Zell, 770-909-5000. Let's pray over the offering and the tithes and the seeds of the people today. Father, thank you for giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Bless the tithes, the offerings, the seeds your people are sowing. The thanksgiving offering, cleanse them with the blood of Jesus. Father, answer us by fire. We cannot pay you for all the great things you've done for us. All we are saying is thank you, God the Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. Jennifer, yes. You can sell it if you want to mail it. Somebody put out the mailing a postal address. Thank you. Happy anniversary to me. Happy anniversary to me. Happy anniversary to me. Happy anniversary to us. <laughs> August the 1st. 22 years of marriage to Pastor Sharon. And on Sunday, we're broadcasting from Glory House. Maybe we'll sing happy anniversary to her or to us or to me or to her or to both of us. Amen. To God be the glory and thank God for keeping us. God will keep you, prosper your home as well. Your children will not be stranded. No, no, no. All our children will not lack their mates. All our children will not be stranded in life. All our grandchildren will not be stranded in life in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all your thanks and greetings and to God be the glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Curly. Thank you, Pastor Doris. Thank you so much, Gogoras. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, beloved. Thank you, Nanny0143. Thank you, beloved Conqueror. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Prevail. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Deaconess Esther. Thank you, thank you. I will see you on Sunday. You can send your uh, birthday greetings to us. You can use the phone number there, 404 935 2878. You can text it, you can WhatsApp your greetings and what have you so that uh, the wife, Mrs. Pastor Sharon, can read them and enjoy them. I don't know, with all these wear masks, wear gloves, wear this, wear this, now they're asking for a face shield. We can't even bring it. I don't even know if we can bring a cake to church or bring a cake to, <laughs> to come after the social distancing. But watch what happens in the month of August. Something new will break forth that will heal the earth. God will bring a healing and a cure upon this earth in the month of August. Write it down. You heard it first here on Command Your Day. And I'll see you on Sunday. Happy new month. Happy new season. Happy new time. And you've been sowing and praying and waiting. The time we've been waiting for has come. God will do a new thing. Thank you, Running. God will do a new thing. God will bring new sounds, new healings. God will open new doors. God will bring new cures and healings and blessings upon the earth. And you will receive your portion in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God's people said, 
Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll post some prayers. You need to pray for the month of August. I will post them on Facebook, okay, at um, Heal Our Land. You go to Facebook. Thank you, Jennifer. You go on Facebook uh, in the morning or later. You see the prayers for August 2020 that you may want to pray, okay? Since we don't have any broadcast tomorrow, Saturday, it's my wedding anniversary. If you want to be a part of it, thank you. Happy birthday to all the August birthdays. Thank you. Thank you. It's our birth month. It's our anniversary month. Now, um, if you want the prayer points, I'm going to put them up on uh, on uh, Heal Our Land page on Facebook. You'll see my picture there, Heal Our Land. I think we're going to convert it to Command Your Day Facebook page. Thank you to all of you. Thank you for your support your prayers, your love, your gifts, your seeds. Some of you send through Cash App and what have you. God bless you. Thank you so much. God will honor you. All the pastors who always, always support us, watch. Thank you so much. All the preachers, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Some of you got the prayers. Some of you got the handkerchiefs and so on. The rest of you will get it. And I pray that there will be miracle signs and wonders in your life, all the days of your life. In Jesus' name, bye-bye.